Gary DePaul with Unlabeled Leadership. Welcome to episode 104, A Leadership Story. Here's a shout out to listeners in Palestine and in the Netherlands, Groningen, North Highland, and Utrecht. With that, let's get started. About a month and a half ago, I started a new video series called Your Map. Map stands for Monday Action Plan. Each week, I provide a single action that you can do throughout the week to help improve how you lead. These are really small acts that you would do, and by themselves, they may not make a huge difference, but when you add them up week after week after week, It has a cumulative effect, or a compound effect if you prefer, that will strengthen how you lead. In map number six, I ask viewers to share a personal story with people they work with, interact with on a regular basis, that those people might not know about. Personal stories are a way of connecting with other people. It's a simple task, but it can be difficult trying to figure out what you want to share and how to introduce it into a conversation. In this episode, I'm sharing a leadership story that had a big effect on a lot of people. I'm sharing this story to model how powerful it is to share part of yourself and your history. I'm also sharing this to illustrate the principle, connect with others. It's an unusual story that I think you'll appreciate. Part 1. The New Senior Vice President At a Fortune 100 company, the executive vice president reassigned the roles of senior vice presidents. In the morning, employees came in and they found out they had a new senior vice president leading their department. Randy, one of the senior vice presidents, was assigned to a department of about 90 people. These employees received an email that said at the end of the day, Randy wanted to address them and they were to meet in this amphitheater. When the time came, One of the vice presidents introduced Randy. Randy approached the podium, looked around the room, and instead of talking about strategy, how he was going to run things different, what was going to stay the same, he didn't address those types of things. Instead, he talked about his family and how his career developed, where he started with his first company and progressed. Near the end of his talk, he described something that happened to him when he was down in Buenos Aires, Argentina. There, he was visiting a company as an HR consultant. Before leaving, the company warned Randy that there was an increase in kidnappings, not to walk around because they didn't want him to be at risk. Randy took this in stride, arrived, went to the hotel, took a taxi to the office where he was going to be consulting, spent the day there, finished up, went out to a taxi, and headed back to the hotel. Or so he thought. It turns out that the driver was a kidnapper. The taxi stopped, and some men entered the cab and explained to Randy his situation. They held him for a period of time, but for whatever reason, they eventually released him, and he made it back to his hotel in one piece. That's how he introduced himself, sharing his career, and then this unusual story about being kidnapped. Part 2. The Rest of the Story What I didn't mention to you is that I was one of the employees in that company, and I found that Randy was my new senior vice president. I had known Randy for, I don't know, a couple of years. I would occasionally walk by his office, stick my head in, talk to him, and just have small talk. It was nothing big. I got to know him. He was very personal. After the talk, and Randy had introduced himself in this unusual way, I walked around and found groups of people huddling together and talking amongst themselves. I walked up to one group just to listen in and join in the conversation. Here's what I heard. In the circle that I joined, the employees were expressing how much they appreciated Randy and how personal he was and open about who he was, what he was about. They were looking forward for him to move to the department in the office so they can drop by and get to know him a little bit better. It made a big impression. Not only that, but when I looked around, I noticed that people were a lot more optimistic than they were before the change. They were looking forward to coming in and interacting with Randy, even if it was just at a casual level. Randy made a big impression. Part 3. 
The Connect with Others Leadership Principle. Okay, if you listen to enough of these episodes, you will have heard me talk about seven leadership principles. These are leadership principles that I derived from about 14 leadership books, where I looked at them all together and came up with this commonality of these principles. One of the principles is discussed a lot in these episodes, and it's connect with others. It's a simple concept. Unfortunately, some of the simplest concepts are the hardest to practice. For this principle, connecting with others involves building relationships and building trust. When you have trust and strong relationships, you have more opportunities to help people mature and develop mentally and morally. In other words, help them build character. But you have to build those relationships. You have to build those connections. One way of building those connections is by being vulnerable and letting other people get to know you. There's a myth in management that you should not get to know people that report to you, that that builds some type of a bias in how you treat them, which is really wrong. You want to get to know people. You want them to get to know you. Instead of going in, if you're a new supervisor, and trying to prove that you should be the supervisor, you need to show transparency. In the podcast episode with Mark McNally, he talks about the importance of transparency. And transparency means not making up stories or excuses, owning your mistakes, and being honest and letting people know your limitations. Putting this another way, you want to acknowledge mistakes rather than ignoring them or downplaying them. You want to credit other people for their contributions rather than taking credit. Admitting when things go wrong, such as when you change a policy and it doesn't work. Letting others know what happened and explain why. Being truthful involves personal disclosures. And that means sharing about yourself, such as what Randy did, which had a positive effect on the employees and it actually built up morale. Thank you for listening. If you have a question or comment, go to unlabelleadership.com, click the message icon, and leave a voicemail for up to one minute. I'd like to thank those who contribute to the show. Your contributions make a difference because this is an all-volunteer service. This is Gary DePaul. Until next time, lead on!